Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. I first want to express my uh, gratitude to uh, Reinhard Knecht and his team to inviting me, and his team is including his wife, of course. And it is a very fruitful meeting. So you asked me to speak about lip and oral cavity cancer. For the sake of time saving, I would limit myself to T1, T2 squamous cell carcinoma, uh, leaving the more advanced disease for my colleagues on the panel because those uh, advanced stage 3, 4 disease are nowadays a matter of pluridisciplinary approach. First of all, a summary of the five-year survival and co-specific survival in uh, lip cancer and uh, in the other side of the oral carity. You really can see that there is a difference of 15% uh, in favor of lip in stage one cancer. And this difference is even more pronounced for all other stages with a difference of about 20% in favor of lip cancer. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't matter of the uh, early diagnosis that we can do on lip cancer because stage depend independent of the, of the early diagnosis, but it may be due to the fact that some of those are basal cell carcinomas as well. The incidence of uh, this uh, lip cancer is 12 uh, out of 100,000 habitants per year in the USA and in Europe as well. And it is the most common primary of the oral cavity because you know lip cancer is pertaining of the oral cavity. It uh, rates about 25% of it, a quarter of the, all those cancers. And uh, the causes are well known, solar radiation, tobacco smoking, HPV, uh, various, and uh, it is more frequent in immunosuppressed patient, graft patient, by example. Surgery is the first choice um, for lesion invading less than two-thirds of uh, the lip. Uh, full thickness pedicle flaps are doing very good cosmetic and functional results, like a Bay or a slender flap, which show one. And if you have more than two-thirds of invasion, musculomuscosal flap like Ami Bonnard, free flaps, sometimes for very debilitated patient frontal flap as well, with not so good uh, results in the commissure uh, area. And uh, you may also, as you know, use unimodality irradiation in debilitated patient. This is the example of a lady who had a Abbey flap with the results at uh, two months for a recurrent cancer of the upper lip. It is a more uh, extended uh, midline inferior lip uh, lesion that we uh, reconstructed with a Camille Bernard procedure with the cosmetic and functional results. It is early uh, at uh, two weeks in that particular patient. Now, <clears throat> the prognostic factors in the those cancer uh, are depending uh, majorly on uh, maximum tumor thickness. And I will speak about Martinez Gimeno scoring system later. Also, the site is of importance. Upper lip and commissure are more rapid growing uh, tumors and early lymph node metastasis are um, arriving in preauricular and submandibular uh, area. Now, the probability of lymph node invasion is, of course, important. And that was, uh, in fact, uh, the goal of this uh, martinez gimeno scoring system, uh, defining the T-stage, the tumor thickness, the microvascular invasion, the perineural spread, the histologic grade of differentiation, and the presence of inflammatory infiltrate. They could assign patient to four group uh, with an increasing incidence of uh, lymph nodes invasion among those four groups. And this is, of course, very important because you see that even in the group two, there are already a fifth of the patients who have occult metastasis. In group three, 50%, and in group four, 67, which is a lot. 
Most micrographic surgery has been successful, successfully used and reported with no tumor death uh, related or metastasis at five years, but you should have a team, a pathologic team devoted to this kind of uh, technique. So, surgery is uh, a good treatment, unimodal treatment for T1 and T2 lip cancer. Radiation can be used also as an unimodal radi uh, therapy. Um, external beam or brachytherapy, depending on institutional policy. Uh, surgery, well, if the margins are closed or invaded, if you have lymph node invasion, you should add adjuvant radiation, that is bimodal therapy. Uh, radiation could be used if you have recurrences, local or regional. And the same is true if you have recurrence after radiation, you may use salvage surgery with a very good local control at five years, usually for those early lesions. Well, there are no, <clears throat> so far, no published randomized trial on the use of sequential surgery and or radiation or on the use of chemotherapy. There was s some preliminary study, sorry, some preliminary study on super selective um, intra arterial chemotherapy, but that was a very limited uh, number of patients and uh, there was not reported uh, for final results. Now, <clears throat> going uh, inside of the mouse, the floor of the mouse are um, high risk tumor, even in early stages, because they are really near the mandible. There is no mechanical barrier in the soft tissue behind, in the surrounding tissue, in the intrinsic muscle of uh, the floor of the mouse and the tongue, and there are um, occurrence of early lymph node metastasis. So, it's very difficult to, in some cases, to uh, assess the adhesion or the invasion, by example, by the alveolar ridge into the mandible. And also, if you use radiation of brachytherapy, there is a high risk of radiation induced bone necrosis down the road months or years after the treatment. Um, even with high resolution MRI, it is sometimes difficult to uh, visualize uh, the margins of the tumor. And uh, the invasion of uh, metastasis in the lymph node is uh, as high as 20% for T1 and 62% in T2 uh, lesion. In addition to that, a patient will develop second primary tumor in about one-fifth of the cases. This is due, of course, of the so-called field cancerization effect of tobacco and carcinogens. Surgery is generally preferred for T1, T2 primary and next. Why? because it gives you information about the margin, information about the involvement of the lymph node, information about the adhesion or the invasion of the mandible, and information about perineural spread or and vascular invasion. So when you have those uh, information, you may decide on further radiation or chemoradiation. Now, the role of sentinel node biopsy is under study. In this case, um, just as an example, uh, you, you see that uh, with uh, very good MRI, you can disclose the limits of the tumor, and you see that the cortical and the medullary part of the mandible is intact. And in on frontal uh, um, slides, you can see the tumor, and you see also that the signal of the mandible is intact. So it gives you good information, but it's not always uh, this uh, easy. In this uh, type of lesion, uh, for another patient, you have uh, the limitation of the tumor, but you see on other cuts that the signal in the mandible is very suspicious of invasion along the medullary and along the dental nerve. And it is seen also on frontal curves. You see that the signal ear of the mandible is blurred. And there is, of course, invasion with uh, this tumor into the ramus of the mandible. 
that is a very anterior tumor and the invasion of the mandible is uh, far behind. So, this is a gross um, delineation of the results for surgery at five years with a 95% uh, survivor for T1 and 86-42. The contrail rate, contra rate is, of course, depending on the uh, margins, with 90% results uh, of control uh, at five years with negative margins, but fall down to 62 for positive margin. And you have similar, uh, somewhat similar result, I would say, with a primary uh, radiation, keeping the surgery in salvage. Next surgery will be decided when invasion depth is exceeding five millimeter, and usually you do a supra dissection for unilateral uh, lateral tumor and bilateral for anterior and medial midline lesion. Going to oral tongue cancer, T1, T2, uh, Partial glossectomy with negative margin of one centimeter is uh, recommended. And one more time, thickness, depth of the invasion of the tumor in the intrinsic muscle, perineural spread and vascular invasion is of paramount importance uh, to decide about uh, the further treatment. It is to say elective neck node dissection uh, for uh, N plus occult lymph node uh, in T T1, T2, 6 and 36% respectively, and more in more advanced tumor, of course. So I think that staging is crucial in defining the post surgical treatment uh, with it, uh, external radiation therapy or uh, chemo radiation for high risk tumor. Now, we are facing in surgery uh, more tricky uh, tumors because um, some people are referred after uh, radiation, full radiation therapy or even chemo radiation. And there are uh, people coming with fixed um, tongue in the mouth with this kind of uh, lesion, ulcerated in the middle. And when you have a cut just below, there is no more tumor, and you see that the mandible is intact. So you have to remove grossly two-thirds of the tongue, and in this particular patient, we put a free flap, antibrachial forearm free flap in. It was a little bit difficult to re-educate because he had radiation, he, everything was stiff in his mouth, but we suc he succeeded in, in this effort. But what is very important is that the pathologist didn't disclose any viable cancerous cell in that. It is like in incompetent larynx. We have to operate, but in fact, ev everything seems to be tumor, but it is not tumor, viable tumor anymore. Now, the role of elective neck dissection for T1 and 0, there is no recent randomized trial, and you, you have a lot of retrospective studies that give results remaining controversial on the issue, and I gave uh, two examples of them with you know, different uh, uh, results. If you do elective lymph node dissection, the recurrence rate, if you wait and see technique, you have uh, more invaded nodes, and they are not the same nodes, obviously, and the recurrence rate is higher, but uh, it doesn't turn out like that in in other studies, so it is very difficult to have any level of evidence of what is going on. In fact, looking back into the 80s, there were randomized trials uh, addressing this uh, question of elective versus therapeutic uh, neck dissection in the watch and uh, weight uh, policy in oral cavity cancer. The first one reported by the group of Villejuif by Vandenbroek and co-authors. Uh, patients were assigned either to elective lymph node dissection for T1 to T3 tumor of the oral cavity. And uh, 39 of those patients with elective lymph node dissection are both uh, 49 percent of uh, uh, occult metastasis. In the uh, 36 observation, they had uh, found down the line 47 and plus, and they had to do a therapeutic neck dissection. The percentage of capsular rupture was higher in the 
uh, watch and wait, wait and watch policy, of course. But the disease-free survival at five years was not very.